Welcome to Renews, where we bring you renewable energy news on a weekly basis. This is a breaking news out of the European Sustainability Regulation, Brussels. The European Commission has published a paper in April 2021 called the April Package to bring European capital markets in line with its climate targets. The publication provides further details on the European Taxonomy Directive for Sustainable Activities. It provides a set of criteria which investors are obliged to integrate in their investment decisions in order to realize net zero emissions until 2050 and to separate green from greenwashed investments. The basic fundament of the EU taxonomy went into force in July 12, 2020, a month before Vladis Domoprovkis, executive vice president of the European Commission, summarized the EU taxonomy directive on Twitter as follow. The EU taxonomy is a crucial tool to guide both private and public investment in the EU's recovery to ensure they are in line with our long-term ambitions, European Green Deal and climate neutrality. Coexisting to the taxonomy, the EU Commission also published the Fit for 55 package on July 14th, which is called that way due to the EU target of cutting 55% of GHG emissions until 2030 compared to the base year 1990. The package is a climate target plan which contains substantial revisions and additions to the existing European climate plan. The updated directive of the EU taxonomy sheds more light on how capital will be allocated to sustainable companies by providing a set of criteria for investors to include ESG criteria in their decision making. Moreover, the taxonomy strongly aims on supporting corporates in their documentation of sustainable activities. Especially from a legal perspective, this new scheme can be challenging for corporates. For discussing this aspect, we have two experts in our studio today, Dr. Gabriel Haas and Dr. Clemens Maschke. Both are partners in the leading legal advisory firm Dantons. A warm welcome to both of you. Dr. Maschke, what is the EU taxonomy and the Fit for 55 package from your point of view and which role the scheme will play for future decarbonization? The EU taxonomy is a cornerstone in the European Union's general deal for transformation, transforming EU economy for a sustainable future. Actually, in, cur- in terms of current developments, just yesterday, the EU Commission presented a set of legislative proposals, the so-called Fit for 55 proposals, defining how EU member states can meet the goals defined by the so-called European Green Deal. And in terms of putting things into perspective and looking, looking back at the last decade and what kind of role nowadays EU taxonomy plays, it's that basically the EU taxonomy brings along the shift from well-considered intentions versus actual really sustainable investments that drive EU's decarbonization. Thank you, Dr. Maschke. The taxonomy is based on six objectives which concretize how the net zero target should be realized. Under these objectives, a corporate activity is taxonomy aligned if it improves at least one of these targets while not harming the residual objectives. Dr. Haas, can you shed a little bit more light on the EU taxonomy objectives? So um, the objectives um, of the EU taxonomy are climate change mitigation and climate change adoption. Additionally, there are further objectives which are about uh, protection of water and about marine resources, which are about circular economy and uh, prevention of pollution, and and additionally uh, help us to protect the biodiversity and the ecosystem. So first of all, right now, the EU taxonomy, um, or what has been published, is how to, to align with the first two objectives. And um, but so 
In regard to these objectives, companies should um, make sure that they contribute substantially to these objectives. Only if they contribute substantially, which is defined by certain um, regulations, it, it is regarded as being regarded as a taxonomy aligned um, uh, activity. Um, in addition to these activities, companies should, must also make sure that when they are active in these taxonomy-aligned activities, they do not harm the other objectives. So it does not really help to be aligned on the one hand side and uh, to harm another objective. Thank you, Dr. Haas, for this detailed insight. In addition to regulating how corporates need to document their footprints, the taxonomy scheme also sets thresholds for scope 1 and scope 2 emissions for 13 industry sectors, which have a total share of 80% on the European GHG emissions. Especially for the manufacturing sector, the taxonomy sets several emission thresholds measured in ton carbon dioxide per ton product. Dr. Haas, what should companies do to make their business activities taxonomy aligned and to maintain their access to capital markets, which is increasingly determined by their degree of sustainability. Well, first of all, companies should make sure that they familiarize themselves with the EU, EU taxonomy. Because, I mean, actually, this is not so easy as it sounds. Uh, it's, it's kind of a silly recommendations, but in fact, uh, the EU taxonomy is um, an enormous piece of work. Um, and um, with, uh, first of all, it's the regulation, but it's also about these delegated acts with um, numerous criteria. So what the EU taxonomy is about is that um, around 40% um, of the activities of companies which are listed, um, or no, 40% of companies which are listed are covered by the EU taxonomy as it is right now. And this counts for 80% of the emissions. Um, meaning that 60% of the companies are actually not covered by the EU taxonomy. And um, so first of all, companies need to figure out whether they fall into that um, basket or into that basket. And um, in addition, then uh, it's necessary to familiarize them oneself with the uh, very detailed criteria, technical criteria. After having done that, well, I would say identify uh, the risks and chances, chances, and especially the chances of the EU taxonomy, and make the right investment decisions. Thanks again, Dr. Haas. Since the Delegated Act of the EU taxonomy will finally start being enforced at January 1st, 2022, corporates are facing a high degree of uncertainty concerning the question, what is a taxonomy-aligned activity? In terms of renewable energy, a steel manufacturer, for example, can directly invest in renewable energy assets and realize a capex-based approach or can close a power purchase agreement, so following an OPEX-based approach. Dr. Maschke, what can a corporate do to be taxonomy aligned? Whether an investment or spend is EU taxonomy aligned mainly depends on in what areas the investment and the spend takes place. The, principle, the starting point of the question is, the proportion of either OPEX or CAPEX that's being spent, the proportion in relation to what's spent on activities which are rated and defined by the EU taxonomy directive and which are not defined. So in order to, to put it into an example, for instance, if a company would spend 10% of its general OPEX on leasing PV plants, then those 10% would be a contribution to its EU taxonomy aligned OPEX spending. And on the other side, in terms of um, uh, CAPEX spending, if a company would spend 20% of its overall investment um, made over a reporting period, so in a calendar year, if uh, such 20% would be made into activities which are rated, defined by the criteria according to the EU taxonomy directive, 
for instance, hydrogen projects or again, PV plants and the like, then such 20% would be a contribution, a positive contribution to its EU taxonomy aligned um, CAPEX spend. Thank you, Dr. Maschke, for this valuable insight. Especially under the FIT455 regulation, the European Commission mentions concrete instruments like power purchase agreements, which fit in one of these approaches. However, some market participants like NGOs, policymakers and companies are considering the current EU taxonomy scheme as being incomplete. One aspect in this context is the question if bioenergy is considered as being a taxonomy alliance source of energy. Nathan Fabian, a former member of the technical expert group, a group of experts which was formed by the European Commission in June 2018, said in a Reuters interview the proposed rules would allow whole trees and animal fats to be considered as sustainable feedstock for bioenergy. He summarized his concerns towards bioenergy as being a weakening of the technical expert group recommendations. Despite these concerns, a lot of investors have already committed themselves to adopt ESG criteria in their investment programs. Bloomberg analyst Rob DeBuff stated, the black rocks of the world are getting more aggressive about voting in favor of not only climate related issues, but also social measures like, for example, employee health care will play an increasing role due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for watching Sustain News. Next week, Clara Franken will give us updates on different stakeholders in the renewable energy market. Subscribe to our YouTube channel called ThinkRe to stay up to date with our weekly news. We also have a newsletter to which you can subscribe for deeper insights on the renewable energy developments. You can find the link in the description below. We are also active on LinkedIn, Instagram and Facebook. We wish you an electrifying day. Stay tuned.